Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a special episode of the Loan Officer Marketing Podcast. We are blessed to have Ryan Marks on the show today. Ryan, welcome to the show. Happy to be here, Chris. Thanks for having me. Right on. Well, I know this is going to be an incredible journey. So um, just on my side of things, for all of our wonderful listeners, you will notice this isn't my typical backdrop, and there might be a little bit of noise in the background, but don't let that stop you from getting incredible value from today's episode. So Ryan, um, so you and I have known each other for a fair bit of time, and you have an incredible story. So I thought, why don't we just start with you telling us your amazing story in the mortgage business? How'd you get started and where are you today? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm coming up on almost two decades now of being in the mortgage industry, and I've gone full circle from you know, working for the big banks to shifting into direct lending and then finally pivoting, you know, fully on the independent broker side. So obviously we've, you know, for those listening that are veterans, you know, we've seen a lot in that time, uh, you know, the mortgage meltdown to multiple refi booms to, you know, the current market that we're in and kind of hopefully coming out of. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I got my start probably like most where, you know, we didn't go into this thinking, hey, I'm going to be a mortgage lender when I grow up, right? <laughs> so give me a, give me a, like a frame of references. Where are you at right now? Like, what does the business look like? Is it a solo producer? Do you have a team? What does that look like? Yeah, it's a great question. So yeah, I'm a solo producer. I don't have, I don't know if I have, I want to, you know, eventually become like a branch and kind of use like these these great skills and tools that I've learned through, through MMA. But um, at this point, I'm just individual, but my team is, you know, I have my dedicated loan officer assistant, dedicated processing. And then, you know, we obviously work with multiple investors to try to find, you know, the best program fit and, and the rate. And that's essentially, you know, why I ultimately shifted to the broker side, because, you know, there's only so much that you can do with, with, customer service and just having the knowledge and the background. But, you know, in this market, it's really shown us that, you know, for better or worse, you are, you know, we've seen a lot more rate shopping in the last couple of years than we did previous years. And, and having that little extra touch, you know, obviously helps to, you know, keep that client as you've brought them through that entire process, right? Like we've basically, you're doing all the work up front and when they go into escrow, that's like, you know, you get to, take the pedal off the, the gas a little bit because you've done your due diligence, you know, ahead of time. So with regards to numbers though, um, to your question, um, yeah, things are good. They can always be better. Um, you know, I set, I set a goal for 50 million this year. So I've got a little ways to go. I've got, I think, you know, we do larger loans here in the LA market. You know, that's where I'm at. So if I, you know, I have to hit, 41 more units, I think, uh, by the end of the year to hit that number. So we're, we're almost pacing. We're a little off track, but it's definitely night and day from what it was last year, even though, you know, the market really hasn't changed. So yeah. that's just a testament to the mortgage marketing animals and also really, you know, combining the two of those, what you've done brilliantly, by the way. I mean, we just need to, I need to take a beat and just say, you know, kudos to you on what you've created. Uh, I mean, just the CRM alone is 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 incredible, especially for those of us that kind of, you know, if you really want to have all your data kept somewhere and you're used to using your employer's CRM, that's great. But it's if you ever shift, like what happens to that data, right? You have to import it all in and you have to learn a new system. So, you know, I do technically have two CRMs, but you know, where, where all my time and energy and learning is going into your CRM. And then in addition to that, the AI piece. So, yeah, uh, yeah I just want to, you know, give you a round of applause. You're constantly innovating on this thing. You know, we can, we can unpack that for sure. But um, yeah, I went off on a little tangent. So I don't know if I've answered the, the question it's of where I got good. my start, how, where I'm at now and kind of where we're headed. So 50 million is fantastic. And that's amazing in the market that's coming. I think you can hit that goal. That's, that is absolutely amazing. So let's dig into where the business comes from and then how you're leveraging MMA and the CRM in order to get that business. So give me the breakdown. 
breakdown of your production, how much of it comes from your database, how much of it comes from referral partners, how much comes from like marketing and advertising? Yeah, so right now it's, you know, it's a little over 50% is coming from realtor relationships. Right. And then 30% of that comes from other centers of influence, right? Whether it's, uh, you know, CPAs, divorce attorneys, um, you know, honestly, other other folks in the mortgage industry where they just maybe can't, uh, you know, do the deal and we're able to provide a solution to the client. And then, uh, you know, it's 30% is, is past database, but that can always be more. I mean, as you know, I'm sure you're <laughs> nodding your head, right? We can always work our database more. Uh, and then the remainder is coming from, you know, the AI running these AI campaigns and, and partnering up with agents to, work uh you know these older leads whether they've come through you know zillow real geeks you know ppc the list goes on but um there's been a pretty good influx you know in the last 90 to 120 days now that we've kind of worked out the nuances and the kinks of of the crm to get it dialed in and it's constantly improving but there is a chunk of business, you know, coming from the, from the CRM. That is amazing. So you've definitely just peaked a bunch of ears listening. Cause you've got artificial intelligence, automatically working leads, you're getting leads free from the real estate agents and you're closing. So you're closing deals from online leads that real estate agents are sending you. You're taking those leads, put them into the CRM, letting the AI have conversations with them and then funding deals in the back end. Is that right? That's correct. And honestly, that's a hundred percent all I'm using it for right now. Like you have, you know, uh, an entire database of working your clients to gain additional business or just stay top of mind or provide value. And I've gone in there and I've kind of changed a few things around and added more links to like videos just to further personalize it. So we are going to launch that campaign, but you know, up to that point, I've started I've strictly used your AI just to work age leads and had all that success just from, and we're talking, when I say age leads, these leads are two year old plus leads, right? I mean, they're, they're old, they're old leads. Some of them are newer. Some of them are with, you know, six months, a year up, but there's, there's over 70% of these leads that are in there that are two years old, right? Or older. And we're converting these leads. So, so yeah, I Ryan, mean, <laughs> tell me, what does the conversation look like that you have with the real estate agent in order to get them to send you the leads? Yeah. So the very first conversation, you know, I, I approached one of my regular agents mm -hmm. that I've worked with for years now, and and you know, I just let them know, hey, you know, I'm implementing this AI and I've kind of used it for a few other things, but why don't we take all these old leads that you have and we'll put them into this campaign and we'll just see if we can convert any of them because essentially they're not doing anything. So whatever we get out of that, you know, is, is going to be a plus. And, you know, you have to approach it from, you, you have to look at it you can't just approach the agent and say, I'm going to convert all these leads and, you know, we're going to have a ton of closings. You know, you have to make sure that you're explaining to them that, you know, this, this will increase opportunities, but, you know, we have to be mindful that where these leads came from, what the, you know, what the original percentage of close rate is, right? I mean, they're typically, you know, one to 3%, you know, on a good day. So, as long as you just don't give them any, you know, you don't over promise and under deliver whatever success you have out of it, you know, is a plus, but then when it performs well, well then you, you know, you look like a rock star. So honestly, from that, I was able to make additional agent uh, introduction relationships because they were, they were my cheerleaders, right? They were telling, you know, their colleagues, Hey, you know, I have this loan officer. If you have these age leads, maybe you should give him a call and see if there's anything that we can do with them. So that's really where the snowball effect started. I didn't really have to go seek out and, and explain to the agents, which we you can do, but honestly, just the success from that initial campaign is what kind of started the ball rolling to, 
open up other opportunities with agents I had never worked with. And then the idea is obviously you do a great job, you close the loan, you can, you know, we, we've converted it, and then you have the opportunity to work with their regular clients, which, you know, have a much higher uh, conversion ratio. And, you know, typically they're, you know, the agents more engaged because they've obviously been working with the client, you know, already. A hundred percent. And I love that. And no, setting the expectation of the fact, like, this is not going to change your world, but this is a value add so that we get the opportunity to work together. And are you working with anybody right now that I could help out with the free approval? You know, Carl's got a script. I'd love to do at least two deals with you in the next six months. Mm -hmm. Who do you have? that I might be able to work with. So you get your foot in the door with, hey, I'll convert your leads, but then just ask for the business. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it, like you said, it's kind of a snowball effect. But back to, okay, so how many total agents are you working with to convert their leads in the system right now? How many agent relationships do you have because of that? Yep, so we just brought on the fourth agent. So up to about a week ago, we have three agents or running campaigns for on the the AIH lead campaign and they're and they're coming from all different sources so they're not just Zillow leads they're PPC they're old real geeks leads you know some other I don't you know some of them I don't know where they got the information but as long as they're you know they've they've gone about it the um you know, correct way. But then the good thing is, um, you know, the AI campaign does have all the safety nets in place. So if, you know, we are reaching out and engaging and just someone's not interested, you know, and they, they convey that it does auto take them off that campaign. And then we've, we've also been doing other things. So another thing worth touching on is, you know, we're, we're going to approach a refi market, you know, very soon, right? Finally, yep. right? For all of the, for all of you that are hanging in there in this business, and you know, we're you're plugging along, you know, it's there's light at the end of the tunnel, right? We are going, we are going to move. It's just, it's not a matter of if, it's when. So, what we've been doing in addition to, you know, the initial leads of of outreach on the age leads. When the client responds back, hey, you know, thanks for reaching out. I actually already purchased a house or, you know, um, I'm in escrow now, whatever the case may be. We we create a separate folder in the CRM and we put them in this nurture campaign because as soon as that market hits, we're going to reach back out to them again and let them know, hey, you know, rates have dropped. Let's get you refi ready. And then there's, you know, we have an opportunity to convert that as a refinance even though we didn't have the opportunity to expedite the purchase. So if you're looking at big picture, you know, that's why it's important to kind of learn all the nuances of your CRM mm -hmm. because there are so many other opportunities in there, but you have to be ready, you know, you have to do the work now. So you're ready when that opportunity presents itself. So hundred percent. yeah. I love and, the fact that you're, you're engaging these aged leads and I did a deal. I already did a deal. You're building a pipeline of leads that have converted from the source. And you're working leads that are like old, old, like older than six months. So can you tell me the story of that first experience of taking the leads from the realtor and loading them into the CRM? Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, full disclaimer, this probably isn't gonna happen for everyone, but I personally had, you know, an amazing success story from the very first lead that we got I came in on Monday and I went in and there's a new application in my origination system and I'm looking and I have no idea who this person is, right? So I'm kind of trying to go back and figure out, you know, did I talk to this person? Is it old? And then they finally decided to fill it out. Well, lo and behold, it was the AI bot that was replying to the emails and having a conversation with the clients from this age lead and, and initially it was like reaching out, like, you know, we ran it through the campaign and then it started engaging and the AI bots like, oh, hey, just wanted to follow up on your application. And then the client was like, yeah, sorry for the delay. You know, I'm gonna get it over to you this weekend. So all this happened and I have no idea. Like I kind of went in there and then remembered like, okay, I, you know, cause I didn't have it on full, you know, autopilot. I was still going in and, you know, approving and denying, which we can touch on, but, Essentially, you know, you're just you're going through so much data, you're not really, 
you're, you're only keeping track of so much and you're learning how this is working at the same time. So, you know, short story long, the application comes in, we pre-approve this client. And then just to add the icing on the cake, the agent that gave me these leads also had an active listing and the client ended up purchasing the property that was his active listing. So the agent got to oh, double okay. end the deal, right? <laughs> off the first, off the first, you know, converted client from pre-approval to closing. So like after that, it was kind of like, you know, precedent was set. So, you know, we were both, you know, a little shocked and ecstatic, needless to say. And then just from there, you know, we've learned how to like tweak, you know, the, the campaigns, um, you know, what's, what's working and what's not working. So, yeah, I mean, it was a great, I don't really know how much of a better success story you can have than that. Um, but yeah, from that same agent, you know, we've gotten listings out of that. We've gotten buyers. We just closed a buyer last week on this original campaign. And what, what we're starting to learn is it comes at different times, right? So, yeah. you know, some of them will come within the thir first 30 days, but you know, this campaign is pretty long. It runs for almost six months and it, it kind of slows down, right? Where it's getting towards the end where it's not as heavy on like text messages and voicemails and more direct requests. It's more of, you know, drip emails, but it's providing value. But until they've opted out, you know, you just never know when they're ready. So, you know, we find that a good chunk of these leads are 60, 90 days in, and they're now starting to convert, but you know, they all kind of started around the same time, right? Oh, absolutely. It's incredible. Well, it's not, it really makes sense where people are making the largest financial decision of their life. It takes time, but almost everybody buys those leads, calls them one time, and then just throws them on the trash pile. There is so many deals to be done in the yeah. leads that have already been paid for and that aren't being worked right now. And so can you talk a little bit about your experience with the artificial intelligence? Because this is something that I think our industry doesn't quite yet understand about how the AI can have a conversation. So you mentioned it's sending emails back and forth to the lead over the weekend, which results in somebody submitting an application. But you're in the middle as like a safety net approving those messages, right? Like what's your experience working with the AI? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think this, I think this would be a good opportunity um, for everybody listening. So you have to understand that this, this AI and this CRM, you know, it works like all, you know, sales pitch aside, it is a, it's a fantastic product. But if you think you're just going to spend the money to have access to this campaign and like turn it on and just forget it, it you know, this may not be for you. You have yeah. to, there is a learning curve. Like I do not by any means come from a tech background. You know, I can kind of learn things or, you know, I generally grasp the AI because when it, you know, when I was aware of it, I was already using like chat GPT before I came upon your CRM. So I had a basic understanding of like, you know, just checking grammar or, you know, writing some articles or just trying to create some content, like very, very basic stuff. But I saw the power in that. And I was like, this is incredible. Like this is, this is literally going to change the future as we know it. But, you know, it was still kind of dormant. And then just for whatever reason, in the last like three to six months, I mean, it's taken off, right? It's now it's become mainstream, but you know, everybody kind of knows it's there, but there's like two buckets. There's like, we really understand like what this movement is and you know, it's exciting and it's a little scary or there's the other bucket where it's like, yeah, this is cool, but I don't really think it's going to change how we live. Right. And there's, you know, it's like a 50, 50. So when I, I'll never forget, I was visiting family in another state and I was flying home back to Los Angeles. And, you know, I was on like the mortgage marketing animals uh, platform and I was, you had launched like right away, there was like these four or five videos that were just dropped all at the same time. And I remember I watched all of those on the entire flight home and like, I was hooked. I was like, this guy knows exactly what he's talking about and he gets it and now he's figured out a way to use this technology right within our specific industry and that's why 
you know, to piggyback off of that, that's why, you know, I've been with MMA coming up on a year now, right? So I started August 27th of last year. And, you know, I was uh, part of MMA and, you know, there's incredible stuff that I got out of that. Like that completely changed my business. Um, you know, I was probably like so many other loan officers where we have been doing this for years and it was raining, you know, money. And then all of a sudden the market came to a halt and you slowly saw your business go from like 100% to 50 to like a third of what you were making. And then you're, you're probably having inner dialogues of like, should I shift into another industry? Should I be like, you know, buying a laundromat and trying to, you know, start a different business? Uh, you know, and I was, you know, I was struggling with this, but I was, I know, you know, I've been through so many of these other waves and you just have to kind of ride it out. But, but at the same time, it was different. And I just thought, you know, something has to change. I have to look at my business a different way. So, you know, I happen upon MMA and then I just dove in feet first. I mean, I spent all the time to go through all the you know, recorded videos and learn, you know, just, I basically just relearned how to do what we already did because, you know, a lot of the skill set is there for us, but, you know, like me, if you're not around your peers every day, you know, you become rusty, right? Like if you just sat around 10 loan officers all day that were top producers, you would naturally be a top producer because you would just pick up all that stuff, like right within your, your sphere. So, you know, when you're at working from home or you're at an office, typically you're not around, you know, any of your colleagues that are in the business with you. So what that's what MMA, the main thing that gave me back, it was like a community of people that were still excited to do mortgages and were constantly looking for ways to create opportunities, right? And then constantly putting content out on how to do that. But, and I just, and I don't mean specifically for loan officers alone, but for the real estate agents, right? Like, you know, kudos to all the other, you know, uh, services out there or other things that agents can use to go to conferences and things like that. But like at the end of the day, like if you have a good loan officer who's up to date on the market and, and they have the content that you, you don't need to pay that money to them right like let your loan officer provide you with that value so that's the biggest thing and the other thing about mma is it's 100 percent mortgage related so if you've ever had a private coach like i've used private coaching before but it was for coaching for anybody in the sales industry like they could have owned a nail salon or they could have been you know fortune 500 ceo but this is just directly related to lending and real estate so when you're when you're constantly putting out new content, it's related to your business. So that way it's relevant and it applies specifically to you. So that way in turn that you can give your agent all of that great content and help initially help their business. So, um, but sorry, but going back to uh, the AI CRM and, and, and uh, you know, the fact that you have to, it takes time, right? So if, yep. if you're willing to, and I've talked to quite a few people actually who have come to me and said, what do you think about this AI CRM? And I tell them all the same thing. And I say, you don't, you say you don't have the time now to invest in this and you're going to maybe pick it up later, but you're never going to have that time, right? It's never going to be available because there's you're a learning curve. You're going to have more time than you've got right now. Exactly. Right. And it, maybe you do have the time. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it could be one of those things where you have the time, but I didn't have the time. So I had to make time, whether that was nights and weekends, but the difference, though, is like with learning anything, if you invest into it now and, you know, I had to also I mean, literally, I didn't know anything about your CRM. Like it has calendars, it records videos, it's got a dial like it is truly a one stop shop uh, product. So I had to learn all of that stuff. But once I learned it, well, now I've taught my loan officer assistant. So then now they can do I can take some of that workload off. And again, once you've learned it, you can still do it yourself. Uh, it's just, if you have the ability or in a position where you can delegate that, you know, you have to learn how it works so you can explain it to somebody else, right? Again, it's 100%. just, yeah, it's, there is a lot of plug and play. You know, you've done a great job of building out these campaigns. So a lot of that part is plug and play, but just the natural design of it itself, there's a learning curve. So if you take the time to get through the learning curve 
and you use, you know, the, the great support staff that you have, like that's what was key for me, right? Like now if I hop on, you know, a, one of the daily calls, like everybody knows who I am, like, hey, Ryan, you know, sometimes it's like, hey, Ryan, what do you need today? Kind of, they don't say it like that, but you know, it's like, it's me again. <laughs> so, of course, but we want you on those yeah. calls and you've got a success coach. And we are, I always say to the team, like we are a customer support company that has a CRM as a product. We help loan officers with the CRM, but like us getting it launched for you is so yes. important. Yeah. And, and, and to your point, oh, Chris, yeah. And to your point though, and you guys did a fantastic job because I've kind of seen it in the earlier stages. And it was great to start with, but now like if you're signing up now, it's like, it's a completely different experience because you're constantly learning and making changes of like, Hey, this is really great. But like, how do we, how do we make it work for somebody who has zero technology background? Right. So that, that part in itself has come a long ways uh, with the support piece. So just know that that's there. But again, if you put the time into it, like you, you do have support you will learn how to use the CRM and the AI piece to that. And if you add that additional piece, I mean, if, if it's 20% of your business, like that's a pretty big number, right? Even if it's 10% or 5%, because once you get it going, it, it is automated, you know, for the most part. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's amazing. You know. and what I liken it to is, you know, somebody who walks everywhere, like, you know how to do it. And you're going to get there. But if you stop walking and take the time to teach yourself how to drive a car, well, you're not walking for a short period of time, but then all of a sudden you can get everywhere you want to go in a car. And everything that you do past that point is that much faster, that much more convenient, that much easier. And if you look at your specific use case of the CRM, which isn't even, you know, reaching out to a qualified list of real estate agents and getting appointments with them, which is one thing that it does automatically, but you're going to the agent, you can work a hundred leads or you can work a thousand leads that you get from real estate agents. And there's no additional effort on your part, whether you're working a hundred or a thousand, it's just the applications that you have to take on the back end of it. So I, Ryan, I think that you, you know, you provide a really, really important point there. Yeah, absolutely. And you're, and you're right. And that's, that's the biggest takeaway is, you know, a lot of these agents that you want to work with, most of them have contributed financially to purchase leads at some point in their career, or they are consistently doing that and they want to get the most value out of that dollar spent. So, you know, simply using that to open up conversations, you know, in itself it is worth it. Um, but yeah, to go back to your question about what we do when um, initially when we have a lead in a campaign and that that lead reaches out, um, we we have a co-pilot, right? We have the co-pilot setting on. So you have you have three options. You have you put it in the campaign, and if somebody responds, you know you'll get notified like every which way, text message, email in the CRM. I mean, it's like yeah, it's it's nonstop. Um, but you can choose to write that response yourself and reply to it. Or what I use is the copilot feature, which is after you receive a notification, it will tell you like, Hey, you know, your AI is working hard for you. This is what your client said. And this is what we, th this is our response. And then you can read that email that comes, you know, syncs right into your outlook or whatever, you know, email that you use. And it'll tell you like, you know, we wrote this response and it's, it's as easy as just clicking the hyperlink right in the email saying, I approve this. It sends it off immediately to the client, whether it came in as a text message or as an email, which is cool. So if it comes in as a text message, it will reply back as a text message and vice versa with the email. If you don't like it, essentially you go in to that lead in your campaign and you can reply manually or just make tweaks to it. But the cool part about it is, and this, these are the things that you kind of uh, learn as you go along, is you can tell your AI bot for that campaign, you can teach it. So, you know, the easiest way to describe it is the AI is already smart, but it's, it's, it starts out kind of like as, you know, infant smart, right? So it has all the building blocks, but it doesn't talk like Ryan talks and it doesn't engage how Ryan may want to engage. So 
you don't want to just let it run and you know it may not give you the results that you want but once you figure out kind of what typically the clients are asking you can go into that specific bot and you can train it to respond how you would respond the next time around so literally you would just say if a client says this or something similar to this this is what i want you to say and bam and then it like never forgets and like the first time i did that and it worked it blew my mind like that's when i was like this this is crazy <laughs> like this technology is like next level so so yeah so to your point um the co-pilot feature it also gives you a lot of responses that you may not have thought. So what I mean by that is it's if if its foundation is to get you an appointment, right, or get you the application, like in the background, that's kind of the driving force of the conversation. So it's answering the question, but it's also like, yeah, that's great. You know, let's talk more about this. Here's the link to book an appointment. You know, what what time works best for you? Or if you get really savvy, you know, you have your calendar linked and the client's like, okay, I'm available at nine. The AI bot will literally go into your calendar that you synced and it'll, and it'll be like, you're not available at nine. So it'll come back and say, hey, you know, nine doesn't work for me, but how about 11, right? Okay, great. And then it books it and then it'll send them the update, you know, like it works like Calendly, but you don't have to pay for it. Like it's part of the, the CRM platform. So you set up and customize your calendar however you want. Like, I mean, I've gone to the point of like, I have pictures, you know, like images for different calendar links and things like that. So yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. But have, like adding on that AI piece, that's just where, like that's where I was all in, you know, to, willing to learn another CRM because it had this like amazing feature that, you know, I mean, Again, I didn't know the power of your CRM until I got the AI piece, but I am a fan now. But like, it took the AI to get me to like give it a shot, and then having that both together, I was like, "Yep, that's you know, I'm I'm sold <laughs> at that point." That is amazing. Well, Ryan, thank you for being so generous with your time and for sharing with everybody and sharing the value with everybody that's listening. For all of our listeners, um, our CRM is Loan Officer. CRM.AI. MMA stands for Mortgage Marketing Animals. You can find them at mortgagemarketinganimals.com. So, Ryan, I'm sure there's people listening to this episode that may want to get in contact with you. Realtors that are looking for a phenomenal partner to partner with, loan officers that are looking to grow in the industry. How do people get a hold of you? Yeah, I mean, you could uh, check out my website at uh, www.markslending.com or email me at ryan at markslending.com. That is awesome. Well, again, thank you for being so generous with your time. And to all of our listeners, we will see you on the next episode.